feeling happy And moments ago I was only empty What did you slip me? My heart is racing and I'm getting dizzy There must be some complicated after I fucked at this When I wake up in your bed and regret everything I did Like a hangover but leave me needing one more fix She said, shut your mouth and kiss me Hey, don't waste your breath Cause you know what I'm feeling Midnight's closing in And I won't wait for you Don't think about it twice We're way back second guessing And I want you now Just shut your mouth and kiss me Welcome back to the vlog. So today we're doing what I eat in the day. I am focused on reverse dieting, building up my metabolism, um, also focusing on strength training. So I'm doing a new strength training workout four days a week from home to build up my muscle mass. The crazy thing is I really haven't lost any strength from the last time I was focusing on lifting weights. But with this phase, my goal is to get my maintenance calories up from where it is now as I just got through a long cycle of a deficit. I learned that it's more successful to focus on one goal at a time. So if you're focused on muscle building, building up a strong, lean body so you can increase your metabolism, it's good to do that when you are in a calorie surplus. And so that's where I'm at right now, along with my gut healing. And I'm also focused on increasing my movement. So I'm not doing cardio. I'm not trying to cross signals. I do want to build that muscle. And so walking daily does not impact that. If you watched last episode, you saw I'm working on a gut reset. And because of the gut reset, I am focusing on two meals a day instead of one. I just did a very long stretch of one meal a day, OMAD, I was in a calorie deficit, dropped a bunch of body fat. Then now I'm shifting on, moving into the next phase. So regardless of where you are in your journey, there's always gonna be different phases. And from the research that I've been doing, which I've been doing, <laughs> a lot a lot a lot a lot of research on the topic of um, body recomposition muscle strength and muscle and fitness in relation to your body goals and what i have found is that depending on the stage that you're in it's better to focus on one goal versus two goals at once it's better to focus on either building strength building muscle because that is um, a growth phase or focusing on the fat loss. Now, when you do it and you separate it out like that, you become way more successful of, at actually achieving the goal at hand. And so going in different phases, especially if you're gonna pair like a gut reset where you're actually wanting to eat a little bit more calories so that you can get in some of these healthy foods for your microbiome, pairing that with a season or a, a time frame of focusing on muscle growth and increasing your metabolic rate and increasing the calories your body burns at resting is a really good strategy. And then when you focus on fat loss, you are then gonna be at a higher metabolic rate to then put yourself into a deficit. So ideally, when you select your deficit, you can then pick a deficit that is something you would probably want to maintain at or if you've got multiple rounds of these, if you have a lot more body fat to lose, like versus just 10, 15, or 20 pounds, then you would do it in cycles. Like you would do it in a muscle growth building cycle where you're lifting up your calories to get your maintenance level calories up, and then you put yourself into a deficit to drop the body fat. But the goal here is to increase the muscle mass so that you can burn more calories at resting and muscle creates and builds a strong foundation for a very strong body. We don't wanna be doing a ton of cardio because we don't wanna be sending these cross signals to our body. If we're focusing on building the muscle, we want our body to be in a growth um, position, right? So right now, that's where I'm at. I'm focusing on building muscle, building strength, doing strength training four days a week, full body each of these four days. I'm following a program, it's called the MAPS 
starter program um, because it's been about eight months since I have been lifting weights. Now, the cool thing is getting back into lifting weights, the weights I'm lifting now are the same level that they were when I left off. So I don't think I lost muscle mass. I don't think I lost strength. I think I'm right where I was before the fat loss, which is so cool. So um, I'm, I'm my goal right now for the next six weeks or so is to eat and slowly bump my calories up in a reverse diet. My deficit was around 1300 calories, but what happened was because I was in the deficit so long and then once I reached my, my initial results, I stayed at that deficit my body adapted and then now that deficit number became my maintenance number. And so I want to get that number up from 1300 to uh, hopefully like right around 18 to 2000 and be able to maintain. And the way you do this is by focusing on building muscle. You can increase activity by walking, but you don't want to be doing any intense, like high intensity training or like cardio or that sort of thing. And then you go back into a fat loss phase if you want. Now, there's a possibility that I could drop additional fat while I'm building this muscle just on its own and in its natural process, but I'm not focused on these two things at once because for muscle to build, you need to be in a calorie surplus or you need to have enough of the building blocks for your muscle to be able to grow. To lose body fat, you need to be in a deficit and it needs to be, the conditions need to be right for both of these things. That's why it's better to focus on one versus both at the same time. But if you're going for strength training and if you're thinking, okay, I need to, I think that's the best way for me to start. And this is a way a lot of people start who are just getting into this, um, their goals in the beginning. They want to start building up that foundation of muscle to then when they put themselves in a deficit, they're going to have a higher metabolic rate and they'll be able to achieve a higher level of a deficit, which is easier to maintain long term, right? Or you can go straight into a deficit like I did with OMAD. I chose OMAD because it helped me stay in a calorie deficit very easily and um, lose the body fat and then work on building up the muscle after that and then doing a reverse diet like what I'm doing now. And then um, if you decide to go on another cycle of a deficit, you can do that. It really just depends on you and your goals, where you're at and what you want to do. I think it probably is more successful to set up for long-term success to focus on building the muscle first and then put yourself in the deficit. I had been coming off of keto where I had been at a surplus and lifting weights at the same time for a very long time. So it's almost like I was in a bulk for a very long time. And then I went on a cut when I did that OMAD. Now um, for those first 30 days and I focus on the calorie deficit. So right now with the reverse diet, this is perfect for me. That's why I had so much muscle mass and that's why I lost weight so quickly was because I had a very high metabolic rate when I went into this deficit. So now I'm, I'm lifting that metabolic rate up again. So I will have the option to be able to either go in another uh, deficit if I want or I can just maintain there at the higher calories with lifting weights. Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. Now the gut, gut healing comes in because if you have inflammation in your body and, to, and with our gut microbiome, our gut microbiome controls so much of our health, so much. There's a gut brain access, it's controlling your cravings, it's controlling a lot about your life that you may not even realize, your focus, your energy, your mental clarity, your sleep, like there's a lot to it. Fat loss, muscle gain, all of this, your microbiome has control of this. Now, I had my microbiome tested again, got a brand new test results back. And with those results, I'm working on a reset for my gut, increasing a population of really good gut bugs. And I'm seeing massive changes from that already since I started implementing my new list. And if you're interested in testing out your microbiome to get your own food list, I'll put the link down below. Now, the microbiome test is extremely helpful because it gives you a personalized list of foods to focus on. That's going to create massive shifts in your body composition and your health, your overall health, when you follow that list and you avoid the foods it tells you to stay away from. It's not a one size fits all thing. And this is a changing thing that's gonna be changing over time, right? So with a gut reset, when you pair that with focusing on a little bit higher calories and doing resistance training, training, strength training at the same time, you can put your body into a position where, especially with like a reverse diet situation, where you're eating the right foods 
for your body to heal. You're giving your body enough calories to be able to build that muscle, but also you're able to bump up slowly over time, one to 200 calories um, a day for like weeks at, at a time, you stay around that level over where your deficit was. You do this <laughs> and you can set yourself up for major success with body recomposition in the future. Okay, and that's what sets you up for overall health in general, okay? So the goal right now for me is not to get skinny, it's to get strong, to maximize, heal my microbiome, and to fast around 16 hours a day. Now, some days I'm gonna fast a little longer, some days I'm gonna fast a little less, it depends on the day. Um, my primary focus, number one, is getting in the, as many foods for my microbiome that came up on my test as superfoods and enjoy foods to avoid the foods that were flagged to avoid and to follow my new training program where I'm lifting weights um, to do up my steps so I put back on my um, Fitbit so I can follow and track my daily activity. So the goal here is not to do cardio, but walking is great. You can add in some activity by walking, by doing regular house cleaning and that sort of thing. So those are my primary focuses. And so today my calorie target is around 1500 calories um, as my deficit was previously 13 to 1350. Right now to bump it up a little bit is, or that wasn't a deficit, that, turn, that was a deficit that turned into my maintenance calories. Now my goal is to get my maintenance calories up so with the lifting hopefully these extra calories are going towards building that lean body mass may i put on some fat in the process maybe but that's okay it's a part of this i'm not afraid of the scale going up because i know the next cycle if i want to do a deficit i will have plenty of room to go into a deficit to then bring it down okay so that's my goal today because i'm doing early time restricted eating my two meals are breakfast and lunch and um just getting in as much protein, superfoods within there, hitting my calorie target because I don't want to go too high because I don't want to take this um, bulk session or reverse dieting and I don't want to eat too many calories, right? I want to be right in my sweet spot, my zone. And for you, you might be watching this and maybe 1500 calories is a deficit for you. So that might be helpful for you if you're in that stage of of searching for a deficit. I know when I first started a deficit, 1600 was a deficit for me. So your body adapts over time for sure. So for my lunch today, I decided to do eight ounces of chicken. These were pre-portioned out, so it was kind of easy to just throw it on what? the pan. And I'm trying to get in these extra veggies. So this ended up being a low carb meal, but my carbs today were perfect because of the oatmeal this morning. Um, I added some cheddar cheese to the top of this. I would suggest using a different kind of cheese because if you know anything about cheddar, once you bake it, it kind of like disintegrates. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, it, I think it's just because it's a lot of fat in there. So I would use probably like a mozzarella or something that doesn't do that. And also I probably could have cooked the vegetables and the chicken a little longer before I added the cheese to the top. So I had a little bit of sour cream with this and some guacamole and this was a perfect meal and then i had an apple for dessert before closing out my eating window and going back into my next fast <laughs> <laughs> So here's my day. I ended up right on target around 1500 calories. I had really high protein and perfect carbs, perfect fat. I ended up having an eating window of six hours on this day. I closed my fast at 5 p.m. giving me a few hours before bed. And now check out the foods that I ate for my microbiome based on my test results. Now the crazy thing is I cannot have yolk based on my microbiome but i can have egg whites so that's why i'm eating the egg whites with that first meal as you saw today minimize cheese is minimized which just means that i don't want any more than 20 percent of my daily calories to come from anything on the minimize list and so that was perfect for the day as well now check this out this is so cool here is where i tracked my macros for the entire week and i was on target 
my target for this reverse diet was between 1555 to 1647 this week and I ended up tracking at 1637 on average for the week. Now remember, the average is what matters the most. Some days you might have lower calories, some days you might have higher calories and this goes for a deficit as well, but you want your target to be the average at the end of the week tracked. Now also my macros uh, my protein, my carbs, and my fat were also on point, but I'm really not too concerned with that. I really just want to make sure I'm hitting my protein goal. The carbs and the fats can change, um, but some days I'm going to have higher protein. Some days I'm going to have a little bit lower protein, just like anything else. This is what's cool. I maintained my weight this week. So that was my goal to go from where I was eating before and bumping it up in calories, maintaining my week. So now what I'm going to do for this next week is I'm going to stay at this level to see what my weight does. If I continue to maintain, that's a good sign. And then I will bump it up again, 100 to 200 calories a day for the following week. So as an example, instead of 15 to 1600 calories i will be looking for 16 to 1700 calories every day for the following week or two weeks after that once i i can show that i'm maintaining you don't want to see a large jump if you get a large increase in weight that's typically water weight but it can also be fat as well because it is a very slow process to gain muscle um, women can gain one to three pounds of muscle a month. And so with body composition changes like this, if you're focused on reverse dieting and you're focused on increasing your calories slowly over time so you can get your metabolic rate up, but you're also lifting weights, it is possible that your body will lose body fat at the same time. Um, it's not good to target that as a goal since it can cross signals. But if you're targeting the muscle gain and you are targeting the reverse dieting, it's not uncommon to see that your weight could stay the same in the month, even though you may put on three pounds of muscle, you could be losing three pounds of fat in the process of this at the same time. So that's where I'm at. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching this. Take care.